Although general maths is one of the easiest subjects content wise, it's also easy to make mistakes and these mistakes can either make or break your final study score. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Marshall and this year on VC results day, I scored a perfect 50. In this video, I'll be talking about errors that I made during practice exams for data analysis so that you can avoid them immediately. So first things first, when you're given a graph or scatter plot, always check the axes so you don't get hit by a trick question. As we can see in this example scatter plot, it doesn't start at 0, 0 but instead 0 0.9560. Another thing to note here is that on our x axis, it goes up by increments of 10, but the y axis only goes up by increments of 0 0.05. So make sure you check that as well. If you don't take note on this mentally, you might end up with inaccuracies without even knowing it, and these are going to cost you marks. Here in this histogram, we can see that on the x-axis, that it increases by increments of 1. Is that correct? No, because we're dealing with a log scale here. So when answering questions in regards to this, make sure you convert it back into its normal form. Number 2. Always check for outliers before constructing box plots or describing the shape of graphs. Sometimes the question will ask you to create a box plot from a set of data, and if they're nice, they'll also give you the five figure summary. However, do not let this mislead you. The maximum or minimum values and even other values could be outliers, so it's best to check with the upper fence and lower fence formulas. If they do end up being an outlier, make sure to draw your box plot with outliers shown as dots. In the same way, if the question asks you to describe the shape of a graph, check for outliers and then mention the presence of outliers. This can also be used for the other way around. Sometimes a histogram will look like it has an outlier, but once you use the formula, you can then confirm whether it was an outlier in the first place. Mistake number three, always give the exact amount of significant figures or decimal places that the question asks you to do. For example, if your question says to round to five significant figures, but your number is say about 34.8, then you will have to manually add zeros, so it would be 34.800. This is a really small mistake, but it will still cost you a mark in the exam if you did not do it correctly. Mistake number four, forgetting whether the correlation coefficient was positive or negative. I've seen this question in many past exams where it gives you the least squares regression line or the graph and then it gives you the coefficient of determination. Then it asks what the correlation coefficient is. Now remember when we're square rooting the coefficient of determination, the correlation coefficient could either be positive or negative. But if we look at the gradient of the line, it has to be negative in this example right over here. So do not forget to add in your negative signs or if it's positive to leave it. Number five, drawing your least squares regression line correctly. So very often you'll find a question asking you to draw the least squares regression line on a scatter plot. So first we'll find the leftmost x value. So in here it's zero and then we're going to substitute this into our equation and once we plug that in we're going to get 5330. Then we look at the rightmost x value, which here is 9, and putting that in our equation, we get 29,450, which will be put around here. So we plot these two points, and then with a ruler, draw a line connecting these two points. Then what we'll do is write the coordinates of these two endpoints. Drawing the linear regression line this way is highly recommended by reports on VCAR. Number six. Always double check your CAS calculator when you're putting in your data inputs. In data analysis SACS and the exam, you're going to be given a large data set in a table and you have to input this into your CAS calculator in order to answer questions. After inputting all of your data, double check with the table and your CAS calculator that all the values are correct. Double check, triple check, quadruple check. This is going to save you marks. Even if one single number is off by a little bit, it's going to give the wrong answer based on that. So always double check that you put in the correct values into your CAS calculator. Number seven, extrapolating data is when it's outside the data set's domain, not the graph. So when you make data predictions uh, with a least squares regression line, you have to know whether this is an example 
of interpolation or extrapolation. So here the question asks in regards to question B, where it gives 65 centimeters. Now, 65 centimeters is in fact extrapolation, not interpolation, because it's outside the data set's domain. Even though 65 centimeters can be plotted here on this graph, it's still extrapolation. If you guys found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if this reaches 50 likes, I will make another video about mistakes to avoid in finance slash recursion. So subscribe so that you don't miss that out. Anyways, I will see you guys later in the next video.